aka Padders. Here we go. We got Todd McFarlane and the most epic of all comic book lies. This is a lie that you repeated. You can blame him for it. Let's get into it. Here, Tom McFarlane talks about how determined he was to break in the comics, and then he goes, I received over 700 rejection letters. Previously stated, he's stated 300, 350, and now 700. This is what I would consider to be the biggest lie in comics because it gets repeated so much. Peter A. DeLuca here, aka Pad69, and say it with me, bow to your sensei but known through Philadelphia, PA, and the multiverse as the eclectic one. FYI, real quick, because I know some of you haters like to leave those hateful comments. This is not my bed. Uh, we're in my living room, by the way, guys. Uh, I think anyone that would think this is my bed, uh, this is what they sleep on. So, good luck, hater. Rocking and rolling. Here we go, guys. Uh, done a couple intros to this, done a couple drops. Uh, some of them were exciting, some of them were melodramatic, uh, none of them felt right. So this is like the fourth or fifth time we're trying to just define this before I'm going to show you guys a montage of Tom McFarlane just telling this lie, this creation myth lie. And it's a lie because he's even lied to the people of uh, Complex and lied to the people, lied, he even lied to Tim Ferriss. Now, even in publications, he has perpetrated, perpetrated, repeated the lie. And the lie, the reasoning for it, the re okay? The big H, you guys know the big H, WW2? He said, uh, if you tell a lie big enough, everybody or anyone will believe it. I'm paraphrasing that. But maybe it wasn't even him. But anyway, it's the idea... The idea of telling your fans, the populace, the comic book world, something so crazy that they're going to have to believe it. And when it comes to you, a young Tom McFarlane, making your way in the world, and you get that attention when you touch Spider-Man, and it all goes through the roof, and then Spawn becomes Spawn, people are all about you. They want you. And you make them more about you when you tell them stories and you, you sell yourself because in a way they're investing in you. They're investing in you, Todd McFarlane. And what's a better way of doing that than just telling the people something fantastic? And it gets to the point where it's so fantastic, people hope and they want it to be true. As I'm talking, you know, like, we will put it up right here. This is from his own. I think Instagram, he shared this. Uh, letters, rejection letters, and his chart, because he referenced a chart before. People, there's just not enough here, okay? There's not enough here for 50 rejections. Now, but he told this lie, and he said 300, then he said 700, and there's other interviews where he's given other numbers. He isn't, he's, he's, he's not being like in jest here. Not ingest, unjust. No, he's what well, injustice. But no, he's not joking around. Todd's not joking. Todd is talking about this as absolute truth. We will get to the montage of him peddling this lie throughout his entire career, answering the question, approaching the question in different ways. And the reason for that, the reason why there's like little details and data points that don't really line up is because he every time he tells it he's telling it for the first time anyone that's seen any csi knows how liars work but here on this channel it's truth justice and the aka pad way we have an army i have an army to lead and all of you even some of these defenders and these haters i get it but anyone Anyone out there that interviewed Todd McFarlane and when he gives the basic arithmetic of these rejection letters, 
If that interviewer doesn't catch it and call him out immediately, they're believing the fantastic lie so much that they're blinded by it, or they're uh, maybe dumb, maybe dumb. But I do like Tim Ferriss, so so maybe Tim Ferriss isn't dumb. I don't know, but people, even the cartoonist K Fabers, even the cartoonist K Fakers, how can the cartoonist K Fakers? They interviewed and they talked about Tom McFarlane so many times. I believe they've only done one interview though. But how do you say that you're of the culture, you're of this time, that you're of the 90s, and you don't think about this point? Even in four years, 700 mail out, 700 rejection letters, he said uh, a year and a half with 300 rejection letters. It, it's it, it, The cycle of it doesn't make any sense. The responses doesn't make any sense. And what he doesn't tell you, this is the baseline of what he's keeping you from. He was talented enough to get hired. He was talented enough to get a shot. He was talented enough to get into one of the big two or both of the big two. That's what she said. People, aka Patters, the guy had talent. It had nothing to do with his tenacious rejection letter campaign. I don't know, but it was a lie that people absolutely loved. And anyone that questions it at this point is a joker. Otherwise, prove me wrong. Let's see the giant sack. Let's see the giant stack. Let's see the inventory of these rejection letters. And let's see all of the charts. AKA Patters here. I love you guys. We're, we're going to end this. I'm going to hit you guys with the montage. God bless. So I sent off about 30 or 40 packages a month for about a year and a half. So when it was all said and done, it was about 750-ish packages that I sent off. Another game of competition? First job in comic books, you've posted, I want to say, photographs of 350 or so rejection <laughs> letters. Yep. When did you first start sending those out? And did you get any particularly helpful feedback that allowed you to modify things so that you were able to get that first job? Before I graduate, I get my first job. And how did I get it? By sending literally 700 samples over the course of those four years and just on one level, I think I just wore them out because I sent it to every editor at every company to open up his mail every two <laughs> weeks. I think I just, I think I just wore them out, and and I got the job literally three weeks before I graduated. So I started sending samples off when I was going to college. When I was going to college, I would send off like about seventy-five packages a month, and and what I would do is I I'd, I'd make a big chart because I was real psychotic. And, and, and uh, I made a chart on who sent me back, reply. Good, bad, or indifferent, I didn't care. See, the guy who goes, I sent off a sample and I got a rejection letter, buddy, I got a sack. Now I'm telling you guys, a sack at home that's got over 300 rejection letters. And Here, Tom McFarlane talks about how determined he was to break into comics. And then he goes, I received over 700 rejection letters. Previously stated, He's stated 300, 350, and now 700. This is what I would consider to be the biggest lie in comics because it gets repeated so much. Baseball program to Canada, and I want to play baseball. My day routine, get up, play baseball, go to school, have a three-hour janitor job, go to my second baseball practice, to every company, not just Marvel, not just DC. There was first comics. There's Eclipse Comics, there's Pacific Comics. If they existed, I found out who the editors were, and I'd send them off to 35 of these people, and I'd sit back and I'd wait. And I did that for years. I got 300 rejection letters. 